Hello, with Taibin. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? So, for people that haven't grown up in the Middle East, I often get this question What's up with all the anime? People dressed up like this, singing this, with their hands on their hearts, like it's the national anthem. So, how did all this happen? More than pretty much any other country not named Japan, Japanimation was synonymous with popular culture here in the Middle East, across the Gulf and North Africa. See, in the 1970s, the Gulf region was really coming into its own, and they were scrambling for content, any content. We needed an easy fix, something we could buy, dub, and put on the airwaves. Snap. If that sounds familiar, it's because we're still doing it today. Why create something when you can just buy and dub? We put the dub in Dubai. So in 1976, the GCC Joint Program Production Institution was set up in Kuwait to create programs for the region. They knew they had a huge youth population here hungry to be entertained. So they went with one of the most prolific entertainment industries at the time, Japan. They actually dubbed over 50 series into Arabic using talent from Kuwait, Syria, and Iraq. I'm sure you'll recognize a few names. Adna Mulina, Grandizer, Ar-Rajul Al-Hadidi, Heidi, Captain Majid, Sandy Bell, and tons more. There are 50 of them, I can't list them all. Entire generations grew up not even realizing these cartoons were Japanese. They dubbed them into Arabic, they changed the details to make them culturally appropriate, and if you squint really hard, it kind of looks like the Middle East in the 80s. Kind of. So this explains why if you look at recent animation from the region, it looks, well, Japanese. Things like Imara, Kenzel Hattab, Torkaiser, and Empire of N. But here's the thing, and here's why I'm so obsessed with popular culture. It's not even about the animation or the cartoons themselves. It's much deeper than that. These cartoons are the reason why, in high school, I made this. By the way, the plot of this film is that the Japanese took over all of Asia during World War II and that we're technically Japanese now. For some reason, I felt the need to come up with a historically accurate reason for why ninjas are in the UAE. It's also why when I directed my first short, it looked something like this. Think about it. How many kids watched Grundizer growing up were inspired to go into robotics. How many kids watched Adnan Olina and learned about climate change and environmental conservation? How many kids grew up wanting to play football because of Captain Majid? And by the way, that's not even his real name. It's Captain Subasa or Subasa? Subasa. Subasa. One of those is right. My fellow Arabs who grew up watching these cartoons often talk about how impactful the themes and values were on them as young adults. Things like uh, social responsibility, family obligations, honor, duty, and unity. <laughs> They're literally shouting, unity is power, only eight years after the UAE was formed, and in the 70s when Arab unity was still a believable ideal that we could all strive for. People from across the Arab world still talk about how Grandizer's fight against alien invaders can be read as a metaphor for the fight against foreign powers here in the region, a theme that sadly is just as relevant today as it was in the 70s and 80s. But sometimes I wonder just how much of these themes just happen to fit the culture here in the Middle East, and how much of our culture was shaped by them. How much of our ideology, our worldview, our moral structure was shaped by things that we watched, consumed, and lived as children. 
how much of our hearts and minds belong to the land of the rising sun. <laughs> Today, Japanese anime and manga show no signs of slowing. Although they have other forms of entertainment now, the holy trinity of Bleach, One Piece, and Naruto still have an entire generation of Arabs converted. And if you're a little younger, things like K-pop, K-drama, and Korean culture in general have given you a new adopted homeland to look towards. I've already talked about the way the content I've made since my youth was informed by Japanese entertainment, but I've yet to talk about the single biggest life decision I made because of it. After graduating from university, I decided to take a job in Osaka, Japan for one year, armed only with unrealistic expectations, and my broken command of the Japanese language made up entirely of anime catchphrases. Matemati! Itadakimasu! Arata wa Probably not a good one to be shouting in public. I experienced the fantasies and realities of a nation that I built up in my head to almost mythical status. It managed to simultaneously live up to those expectations and disappoint me in ways I didn't expect. My trials and tribulations in Japan are long and maybe the subject of another video. But the important thing here is that I had to go. It didn't feel like a choice. I had to go see for myself the nation that had formed me as an individual, had instilled in me their version of right and wrong, had colonized my psyche. I had to make a pilgrimage to the motherland, literally hike up Mount Fuji and pay my respects. I had to know where I came from, because that is the power of media. It shapes us and defines us as individuals in all these subtle ways we can't resist. It shows us worlds that are not our own and invites us to be a part of them. I'm a proud Arab to be certain, but a not so small part of me will always owe a debt to Japan. And for that I say, Arigato gozaimasu!